Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Speaking of which, uh, we're playing Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against the devilish Mr. Lodrick. And if you've been following along, uh, we've come a long way. We're almost here to the end of January. As a matter of fact, we will be at the end of January after we watch this combat resolution. Now, I did not do a setup video this time. I think I'm going to change the format just a little bit and do, let's say, like two combats. And then I'll do more of a kind of a big grand overview. We'll go all the way around the map. Uh, as a setup video, like every third video or so, instead of trying to do one each time. And we'll go look at, you know, important places around the map or where action happened the time before. Uh, but I, I get the sense that people are a little more interested in the combat, uh, which makes sense, right? I mean, you want to see the action, so do I. So anyway, let's jump in here. It's January 30th and January 31st. We're playing two-day turns, so... We'll see the combat resolution for both of those days, uh, and let's get into it. Let's see what happened. Uh, right now, I'm trying to think of, you know, what would be important, what I'm looking for. Uh, obviously, Rangoon. There's always going to generally be some, you know, attempted bombing into Rangoon at this part of the game. Uh, Lodric has just taken Singapore, so he'll probably sit there and consolidate for a couple of turns anyway uh, before he really starts pushing down towards Palembang. Uh, down to Batavia and Surabaya, uh, down into the Dutch East Indies, which will be his next uh, location, or his next uh, target, I would imagine. Also looking around Port Moresby, uh, he's going to start pushing for Port Moresby. He's already landed, obviously, in Papua New Guinea, and he's in Rabaul, so we'll have to check that out, and we'll have to see where his carriers are. You've always got to keep your eye, you know, he's early on, the Japanese player is going to have you know, two main carrier task forces, uh, if, you know, if he doesn't split them up. And a smart Japanese player won't split them up because as the allies, that's your only chance of countering them uh, is if he splits them up into too small of a group. Uh, but if he keeps the two big ones together, so he's got six carriers in each, plus some carrier escorts and some light carriers. Uh, if he does that, he can kind of bully the map at this part of the game. So you need to know where those two are. We know that uh, one is over by Port Moresby, kind of in that area. Really don't know where the second one is. Okay, the Cachalot, that's our submarine, an American sub out here with his crappy Mark 14 port torpedoes. Who found who? Uh, well, we're about to find out. Let's see, no depth charges got in. This was a PB, which is an anti-sub uh, ship of the Japanese Navy. Nothing happened. Uh, he he sighted us, so it was an ASW attack, uh, but he didn't get a shot in at us. We didn't shoot any torpedoes back at him. This is a Dutch sub that has now run into these Japanese task forces. Again, it's all about, you know, who found who. Uh, we see here it was an ASW attack, again, to PB. He's constantly finding us, uh, really doing a nice job of that. We get no torpedoes off, no depth charges come back at us. Now the cash lot in on a cargo ship finally hit but no explosion no and that's the problem you have with the mark 14 so the cashalot launches two torpedoes we got we evaded the pb we got two torpedoes off on an ak that's bringing you know probably supply hell i don't know could even be bringing planes down to rabal it hits the side of the ship and doesn't explode. And that's the Mark 14. Uh, I, I, I couldn't have described it better than that. Okay, uh, this is something I guess we hadn't talked a whole lot about. And this is the Repulse. The Repulse has been sitting at Singapore forever. I knew that Singapore, and it's, it was badly damaged. You can see it was already on fire. Um, so it's it's a British battle cruiser, Okay. It's been here at Singapore because we couldn't get it out. It didn't have enough speed uh, to get out in any fashion. And so it's been sitting at Singapore. Well, the, he was about to take Singapore last turn, so we had to get it out of port, tried to get it out of here to the south, and unfortunately we've run into some cruisers, some what look to be light cruisers or destroyers. I think these are actually uh, Japanese destroyers. And you can see the repulse is sunk. 
uh, it took down a walrus with it because there are, you know, these uh, recon aircraft that you have on a battle cruiser. And you can see here, we, we sent along a little HDML with it just to give it some anti-sub. I didn't want it to get sunk by a submarine, uh, you know, just coming through here. He's got submarines in the area. He ended up having two cruisers, four destroyers. Uh, unfortunately, shell hit seven, torpedo hits two, and the repulse is sunk. That is a very, that's a 200 point ship. Uh, but really, you know, I mean, it got hit on day one of the war. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky and get them out. I did get the Prince of Wales out. The Prince of Wales uh, has floated away from Singapore. I actually took it right up this strait, which I was shocked that it got out. But now the repulse has been sunk. Okay, now what's going on here? Uh, you've got a Japanese sub. All right. This is our carrier task force coming through here. Now, it doesn't show the carriers here because he didn't even get past our screen, our anti sub screen, which is made up, you know, of a lot of destroyers. We've got uh, six of them here, plus a light cruiser and a cruiser. Now, these don't have ASW, so they could have been in danger, but they weren't, uh, or they didn't get hit anyway. Six torpedoes were launched at the Sims, as you can see here. If we go up here, it was an ASW attack, so we found him, uh, and we kept looking around, continued to search, continued to search. Now, what has happened here? Why are we seeing all of his subs? Well, that's because as the carriers came out here, they have sub-hunting aircraft. Uh, you know, the torpedo bombers on here I've got flying out, and it's also got a lot of destroyers. So it's got a lot of anti-sub stuff in it and it's, we're finding them. And you can see them all. I mean, hell, this is damn near every Japanese sub in the game is sitting off Pearl Harbor here. I like this, though. We've got a good screen around here. We've got torpedo planes. And we saw last turn during the combat resolution that we had at least reported five of these submarines hit. Uh, it's not showing up on our report yet because there's really no way to confirm whether we sunk them or not. Uh, but we did have torpedo bombers reporting that they had hit subs. I hope that's true. I mean, we, you know, we need to strike back a little bit. And if we can take out some of these subs that have taken out some of our cargo, that would be great. I mean, it's a little dangerous. Look, you know, if he gets a submarine in through our, our ASW screen and, you know, gets a torpedo into the side of a carrier, you're all going to call me crazy. Uh, but I think it's a risk we're taking at this point in the game. We need to thin out his subs there and, you know, kind of in between Pearl Harbor and the U.S. West Coast. And if we did get even a few of those uh, subs sunk last turn, that is a good thing and if nothing else we may just scare him off uh from that area if we keep floating our carriers out there well not our you know uh, again these are dauntlesses right the dauntlesses are the ones that are, are finding those the seagull okay that's a recon aircraft uh more submarines you know we're, we're finding a bunch out there All right, we get the old Chinese error <laughs> component of the game. As we do every turn, 10 Oscars sweep over the top. They find nothing. North Borneo, we have this group that's, you know, they've turned into partisans, essentially. Uh, they're up here in the mountains. Uh, we take 30 casualties from 27 Betty bombers. Now, as somebody brought up in the comments, it's very true. He's using these bombing runs to train his pilots. And so he's just bombing, bombing, bombing. And is does this unit matter? No, but what he's getting out of it is all of these pilots are gaining more and more experience. It makes them better bombers when they do more important missions. So anyway, one damage nail, 39 casualties. Okay. Uh, on to Kukong here. Uh, these are Mabels flying up over the top. Nothing happening. We get 30 Ands, 36 Idas. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a lot, a lot of bombers out here. Uh, again, this is that, this group trying to get back to Hanyang. Uh, one damage plane, nine casualties. 
bombing into Yanan. Now, this bo Yanan bombing runs goes to show you when you're in a base, when you're in a fortification, you're going to damage more of his planes, and you should be a little bit harder to hit for the casualties. But we do have AA that's popping up. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, three Sally's damage, two Lily's damage. We took 122 casualties. Now, this is out by Ai Chang. We're trying to get all of this back to Ai Chang. We take 23 casualties. Fourteen Idas on this group trying to get back to Han Yang. All right, nobody takes any losses there. It was clear sky, so his bombers just didn't hit target there. Six Ands over the top. All right, one damage Ann. We took uh, no casualties. This bombing group down here hasn't done very well. Six Tojos on the sweep over Changsha. We've got nothing that we're putting up in cap. Uh, two Oscars. Okay. Bombing Yanan again. 25 Sallies. We damaged one plane. 93 casualties. Oh, it took quite a few casualties there. Most of those just disabled, not actually killed, but it just wears down your assault value. Uh, 36 ands, and I would assume he's got troops coming up this road to try to come get Yanan. Now, the problem is it's very hard to get supplies out to Yanan since we've lost Cyan. Uh, 49 casualties here. All right, 27 ands. He's really bombing the crud out of Yunnan this time. Uh, one damage, 63 casualties. We're starting to sight bombers out in that area by Rangoon. He started to push some error out there. We know he's got fighters because they've come in over Rangoon a few times now. Um but we'll have to be wary of what that is. When you see fighters, you can say, uh, you know, fighters, bombers, you can say, oh, okay, well, he's moved him to an air base, or we may have to start thinking maybe that's where his carriers are. Now, I have a, a tendency to think they're over by Singapore, uh, but we don't know where that second group is. We know that there's a group uh, out by Port Moresby, but... Yeah, we're seeing torpedo bombers. Now, torpedo bombers... Generally speaking, you may think we're seeing some carriers there. All right, the DD encounter sinks. So we lost a destroyer that was trying to get up here to Diego Garcia. We lose two destroyers. Those had been damaged long ago down by the Dutch East Indies, and they just weren't able to make it back. Dauntless is out here sub hunting. They're finding them. Um, we'll see if we hit any. We, like I said, it. Yeah, we were uh, hit by flak there. Man, a sub shooting up flak. That's bold. All right, nine zeros. So the sweep is coming a little bit after uh, the bombing. I, I, I would imagine he would prefer it go the other way. Uh, nine zeros over this group that's trying to get back and out of here. This is the Luoyang uh, Cheng Chow group, uh, and they're trying to get back here kind of up you know, by the plateau, which is where you kind of make your last stand up here in China. Uh, 18 Idas, 9 Ans, 20 Sonias in on that same group. Three damage planes, 25 casualties. Now we're down into southeastern China. We've been blocked at every occasion trying to get up here. One of these I am going to try to take back. I'm thinking about taking these two and going back towards the coast. Just because we haven't been able to go through, they're eventually going to be destroyed rather easily if I keep trying to go back this way. So we may do something different. 40 casualties. All right, here comes a bombing mission into southeastern China. Uh, one damage plane, 80 casualties. Marys over the top, again, of this Luoyang Cheng Chow group. Uh, nothing happened there. But he's going to bring 20 Idas back and try again. Two damage planes, we took no casualties.
All right, lots of sightings. And now aircraft have landed from this pulse. We've got some air groups that were combining there at Canberra. Okay, uh, another Dutch sub, but again, it's on a PB. Now, it looks like maybe we got a hit there. Wow, finally! So, looks like a Dutch sub did some damage here. Yeah, excellent. So, sub attack. This is a Dutch sub. We hit one of his PBs. The Sonon Maru number five, torpedo hits two, it's on fire, heavy damage. Goes to show you, those Dutch subs are deadly for the most part. He's done a really good job with his PBs and destroyers of kind of blunting that a little bit, but we do hit a PB here. Fires heavy damage, good, good chance that, that ship goes down. Those aren't particularly hardy ships, so we'll see. I mean... I don't know. I, it could go down, and we just never know about it. Land move attack phase. See if we get anything this turn. Oh, here comes the uh, assault on Bataan. And so this is our last holdout up here in the northern part of Luzon. Now, we're not even, we don't even have troops in the southern part of Luzon. So this is kind of the last battle of Luzon. Let's hope that we can at least just bloody his nose a little bit. We're never going to hold this. We don't have the supply capability. We don't have the strength anymore. Um, they reduce fortifications to a two, but we hold on. And so you'll see that. That's why it's important to get those base fortifications as high as you can because his engineers, his pioneers, have to try to take that out first. And, you know, until that gets taken out, you're going to be able to fight him pretty hard. As you can see, he's got 7,000, or <laughs> I wish it was 7,000, 70,000 troops. We've got 29,000. He outguns us. He out AFVs us or vehicles us. This is the raw total, 2247 against 663, but because we have fortifications and we also have, you can look down here, terrain is a plus, forts is a plus, experience is actually a minus for us. Um, but by the time that goes through the blender, it comes out on the other side, 1139 to 1005. So we're, you know, it's mano a mano out here. And then let's see, he takes 3281 in the casualties. We only take 1648. I would venture to guess that's the best result we've gotten on land yet in this game. We bloody him a little bit. Two to one losses. Uh, we're never going to hold this, right? But... You know, he lost 58 vehicles, he lost 20 guns, he had 28 squads destroyed, uh, a lot disabled. We only had 13 squads destroyed, so, you know, I mean, these could rebuild if we were getting more supply. We're really not, but anyway, you get the idea. Uh, this is this little construction regiment that was left behind by this stack. So he kicked us out of Cyan. These guys couldn't get along there fast enough. And so they're going to, there's 36 troops in here, uh, and 24 of them died. No laughing matter. All right, uh, this is his assault on Lay. It looks like we just had nothing left out here. They got really beaten down by the shore bombardment uh, that he did with his um, ships. I think we've got, what, eight guys left now? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We actually had more than that. It was 378 to 332. But we, I think, had gotten disrupted from his bombardment. And so this was our raw score, 16 to 18. But once you, uh, you know, blended that all up, he had an 8 to 1 advantage on us. Uh, we had a fort level of 0. Leaders, prep, and morale were all negative. His leaders was negative, but terrain, uh, we did have a plus. He took 16 casualties. We took 106. Boo. Uh, I think that's really that shore bombardment uh, disrupting us quite a bit. And that's what it'll do. I mean, artillery bombardment in this game, you don't necessarily see them in the loss totals originally, but they disrupt the troops uh, that you're eventually hoping to attack, I guess, and uh, makes it much easier to uh, inflict losses on them.
sitting over the beautiful island of Honshu. All right, that's the end of January 30th. So we're going to be into January 31st, the last day of January 1942. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, we got the Idaho, uh, the battleship in at San Francisco there. Get some coastal artillery at Madras. 25th Indian is into Karachi. Oh, that's a big one. 23rd Indian, a full division comes in at Madras. A construction battalion at uh, Bombay. 7th U.S. Fighter Command. So all of your command um, at Hawaii switches over from the Hawaiian Department to 7th Command. So now you've got 7th Bomber, 7th Fighter, uh, and 7th overall for your Air Force commands at Pearl Harbor, uh, Hawaii. All right, this same Dutch sub trying to do a little more damage. Let's hope it doesn't get damaged. Uh, that's a destroyer over the top of us, or two of them actually. And uh, we did take two hits there. So he got a PB, but now he's taking a couple of hits. And uh, our main Dutch base is back at Surubaya, so he'll probably have to retreat back there. Uh, the KXI, now I know what it stands for. Uh, okay, we've got surface combat out there by, per, or surface, uh, we found, holy mackerel, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Look at that. Hit, but no explosion. This is a Japanese battleship. We had our submarine, the Thresher, out here by Moresby. We hit it. We hit a battleship. I, I sunk your battleship. No, we found his battleship. We hit it. And... <laughs> It didn't explode. That's the Mark 14 torpedo. Well, let's hope the Thresher itself doesn't get taken out now. It does not, but the battleship Hi? Hi? Uh gets hit. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. The Thresher launches six torpedoes at the battleship. It hit with at least one and it didn't explode. Well, if we had better torpedoes, we would have taken out a battleship there, gentlemen, uh, but no such luck. Wow. So in this turn alone, it's a cargo ship and a battleship. I, I would have much rather sunk the battleship, believe me. And he got six off, so if we would have crippled it with one of those first ones, it's possible that we, we would have just completely taken it out. Okay, another Dutch sub uh, battling with this ASW escort of the Japanese. Uh, nothing going on there. It was a sub attack, so we launched four torpedoes at the destroyers. It look, doesn't look like they got any depth charges in the water, or if they did, it was not close enough. Uh, Japanese ships now bombarding Port Moresby. Well, I'll be damned. Uh, he's got more battleships up here. Ugh, that kills it. You know, that's the kind of thing in a game that can really turn the momentum, certainly. Uh, he does damage two of our war. I have some Warhawks here. We're going to have to get them out at this point. Coastal guns fired back. Uh, we had a Warhawk destroyed on the ground, and we had two damaged. Two coastal gunshots fired in defense. It doesn't hit anything out here. Uh, and we took 187 casualties. The airbase took six hits. This is on kind of a scale of 100. Airbase supply hits four. Runway hits. That's that's a killer right there. We're going to have to maybe abandon Port Moresby as a place to be flying aircraft. 23 runway hits, 5 port hits, 5 port supply hits. Uh, now see if we would have sunk, well, maybe even just hitting that battleship will scare him enough to, to get out of there, but ho holy cow, that's the kind of thing that hurts. Uh, amphibious assault at Sedate. Uh, troops unloading there, he'll take that certainly. And that's the end of the Night Pulse. Working on your night moves with Bob Seeger. 
Uh, and now we're going to head to the day of January 31st. Four ships around Rabal. Okay, now he's going to unload troops there at Sadate and take that in short order. Now, one thing, since I didn't do a setup episode, I'll say he hasn't, he's focusing on, oh, here we go again. The Thresher hits the battleship, another, a different battleship again, and it didn't explode. We've hit two battleships this turn with no explosions. Un freaking believable! It's the Thresher. He's doing his, his crew is doing incredible work out here, and are they're being let down by the politicians in Washington who gave us a defective torpedo? For Lord's sake, uh, whew, we got six torpedoes off at this battleship as well. Man, oh man, the Thresher will go down in uh, infamy. Well, not really. The guys on the Thresher can't be blamed. Okay, Dauntless is reporting more submarines. It said nine ships, but it's submarines. We've got a lot of ships in and around Perth. Japanese ships, I should say. Um, these Catalinas are reporting things out and around Pearl Harbor. Those are all submarines, I do believe. we got a submarine off Colombo that we see now. Oh, can you imagine if we would have sunk two battleships this turn with the same sub? That that would be the stuff of legend, and we, we were right there to do it. 9-0 uh, swept there. This is the Luoyang Cheng Chao group again. A sweep over them with zeros, just making sure we don't have any cap up. We do get one flying tiger up here to face 15 zeros. That doesn't seem fruitful. Uh, we didn't lose anything, though. We didn't lose anything. The zeros are sweeping at 16,000 feet. Now, that's interesting, right? Because the Warhawks and the Flying Tigers both are best at 15,000 feet. Uh, but we may want to bump them up to 20,000 because altitude really matters. Uh, now, they don't have very good maneuverability up there, but at least they'd be diving from the top. So... Uh, it's just something, you know, you always want to kind of see what his altitudes are for the fighters. Uh, two zeros, again, he's flying at 16,000 feet. We may want to go up to, uh, you know, 18,000 feet and get over the top of him. Torpedo bomber over Nicobar. That means he almost certainly has carriers in that area. Uh, Sonia's, Mary's, Anne's, Ida's uh, bombing the Loyang group. I'm just going to call them the Loyang stack. You get the idea. We damage five planes. We only take eight casualties. I'll take that every time. You can see his bombing runs are all at 8,000 feet. Uh, that's where you should bomb from. People have tested this, and 8,000 feet is the optimum for ground bombing. Uh, bombers into Yunnan, and a lot of them. looks like almost 100. Uh, we damage four planes. We take 77 casualties. If we go down here, you can see again, 8,000 feet, 8,000 feet, 8,000 feet. He's got 53 more sallies in. Okay, we damage four planes. So we've damaged about 10 planes out here. Who knows what actually got damaged, you know, badly. Uh, 137 casualties this time. Uh, the southeastern Chinese bombing that we get every turn. 93 casualties. No planes go down there. Oh, I'm still burnt up about those battleships. Uh, because I really wanted to say I sunk your battleship. Now, I know I did it anyway, but I wanted to mean that I sunk your battleship. Uh, 17 ands down here. Uh, one damage plane, 14 casualties. Uh, the group trying to get back to Ai Chang. They've gotten bombed so many damn times. They came out of Xinyang, I think, originally. 27 casualties. One thing I'll point out is when you're retreating like this, assuming you're not near enemy troops, every time you get bombed, they have a tendency to flip over to back to combat as their op mode. You want to go back and change that every turn to move because they'll go faster. Uh, and so sometimes people will forget to do that. We did get some I-15s up. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I went through that. I think we lost both of those. 
they were I-15s or I-16s uh, that went up in cap and got taken out by some Oscars. Here's five Oscars with the sweep. Nothing happening there. 36 ands in on Yunnan yet again. I hope some of these planes are going down. Now, this time we didn't even damage any. Uh, 11 casualties. Japanese aircraft over Rangoon. Aircraft over Sabang. Bang, bang, Sabang. Uh, 13 Sonyas into southeastern China. These stacks that have just been bombed like crazy. Again, 8,000 feet. You always want to check out, you know, uh, the bombers obviously maybe aren't quite as important, but where he's flying his fighters. Nine ands, uh, 8,000 feet for the bombers again there. All right, we're getting some sightings over uh, the northern part of Luzon, but it doesn't really matter now. We're down to the last ditch effort at Bataan. Uh, Loyang Group, 18 Idas, okay, nothing going on there. Uh, Sonia's, southeastern China, no losses on either side there. So he seems to be moving a carrier group up by, you know, through Sumatra and up towards Rangoon. We need to keep that in mind. All right, the aircraft are a landing. All right, fighters over mole mine, aircraft over Sabang. Torpedo bomber, I doubt is up by Ai Chang. Yeah, he's. I, I think he's almost certainly got carriers down by Rang or over by Rangoon now. We're just sighting way too many aircraft for them to. It seems that way anyway. You know, we don't we don't have an actual visual on it now. We're just seeing aircraft, a lot of them. Okay, Cashalot, can you hit the AK this time? Torpedoes miss. <laughs> they just missed this time. So you you've noticed whenever uh, the Japanese get a bead on a cargo ship early in the game here. Uh, from one of their submarines, or any kind of ship from their submarines, it's almost 99% of the time it's a hit, explosion, sunk. When we do, we get uh, hit, no explosion, or ooh, it just misses. Uh, again, these all have Mark 14 torpedoes, and they just, they were defective. Well, you know, I guess that's that's the long and short of it. They were defective. And here we are. Could have had two battleships, uh, at least two cargo uh, we did sink a PB, or we think we, we've sunk a PB. Um, he's out here, uh, Kaviang. Okay, I mean, we've got a little force out here. I tried to get him out, or I tried to get him supply at one point, uh, but that, that got sunk. That cargo ship got sunk up here. Uh, 33 casualties on shore. He's got two light cruisers, two DDs, and a uh, transport ship. So he's bringing in uh, transporters. You can see troops unloading there. Okay, they, oh, he lost 12 troops, support troops, accidentally lost during the unload. Okay, now he's starting to take uh, the island of late, uh, Task Force 386 in here at Cat Balogan, yeah, Cat Balogan, okay, uh, and so he's starting to take that island. He'll take it all eventually. It does take some time. There are a lot of bases, a lot of really small bases out there in the Philippines. Uh, if you can, from the start, get a bunch of supply in there, it's well worth doing it. You've got a bunch of those little supply ships. Now, in this game, he absolutely foreclosed that. Uh, but it's worth it because it, it'll slow him way down. Okay, here comes the next in, uh, assault on Bataan. Let's see if we can hold him off this time. It'd be awesome if we could hold him off one more time and get those two-to-one losses again. Let's see. Hey, we did it. Okay. Excellent. Uh, 1950 to 548 on the raw. Okay. Through the blender, it becomes 840 and 391. Uh, he did not take down our fort level. Uh, fort level two. 
Uh, two to one. So he had taken it from a three to a two. But if we stay here. Oh, I'm, gosh, I'm sorry. Right below that, it says Japanese assault reduces fortifications to a one. Now, when it gets to a one, your, per, your goose is kind of cooked. Uh, we'll see what happens next time around. Terrain was good. Prep, not good. A lot of these were prepped uh, for Clark Field and for Manila. And so they're not getting uh, the proper prep here. Uh, experience, no, not good. Supply, we knew that was terrible. But again, 2770, so we he's taken 6,000 casualties or so. We uh, have taken about 3,200, so it's about two to one losses again. Uh, outstanding. Now, we did have more squads destroyed this time, I will say. Uh, we disabled more of his, but we had more destroyed, which ultimately... You know, when things can repair, squads can repair, it's really about how many you destroy. Okay, he's about to take Samarinda here. We had the base force out of Ballypoppin retreated back up there. Uh, you could see it said Samarinda base force, but I had moved it down to Ballypoppin, I do believe. And so they've now captured Samarinda. All right, we're into the expansion and what's showing up. We got Rockhampton up to a two. Cheng two goes to a two. Uh, we'll see what else uh, arrives here. The big takeaways here is we have a Japanese task force near Perth. We have what we think are Japanese carriers near Rangoon or off Rangoon, uh, at least up in that northern Sumatra area by Sabang. It seems like with all the aircraft we're sighting, that's the case. We did get two torpedo hits on battleships neither one of which exploded almost unbelievably uh it's not so unbelievable you get used to it when you play the allies enough uh we also took down a pb this time with our subs and we hit or we had the bead on two cargo ships one hit one missed uh the one that hit did not explode so three non-explosions this time around what a kick in the pants. Uh, we get a new AP at LA, a new AK down at Panama. We get some motor launches. We get a new squadron RAF up in Aden. We get fighters in at March Field, so that's good. Need all the fighters we can get. Oh, I was going to say earlier, uh, not having a setup this time, the main thing I'm focusing on is getting all of those islands in the South Pacific populated with as much American equipment and men as I can. Uh, maybe that's what we'll go focus on this next time. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this more than I did. <laughs> those damn battleships. All right. Anyway, uh, talk to you next time. Strategy Gaming Dojo. Have a good one.